What's up? Welcome to Dope and Dusty. And today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to cure rosin. And I'm also going to be taking you guys with me to a 710 Labs fresh off the press lunch. All right, so let's get into the curing because I get asked this a crazy amount of times, pretty much like every day still. So I want to break this down into basically like three steps. And I actually got some banana punch fresh press live rosin from 710 Labs. And so I did cure this up already. So I am going to walk you through this basically i'm gonna i took some videos of all the steps while i was curing it so i'm gonna show you guys as i'm talking about it so you can basically get a better understanding so you guys will be able to not only just hear me talking but you also be able to see it with your own eyes because i already cured it so i already went through the stages the first step that i want to kind of go over because this is kind of like i would say the starting step is going to be the temperature that you want to have it in so when you get your rosin from the dispo it's probably going to be in a fridge at like you know near freezing if not freezing it'll be around you know 40 30 degrees fresh press rosin from the dispo should look similar to this almost like a glass texture and see-through you are then gonna want to get your rosin you're probably gonna move it into your car but then you want to move it into an area that's gonna be in between about 76 and 68 degrees and that's the most important part and whenever you're curing you want to think about this if you're at 76 degrees versus 68 it's more than likely going to speed up the process. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. You may not be able to reach 68 degrees. That's okay. You can do it at 76 degrees. Just know that your time is going to be a little bit sped up, but that's okay. The next step we're going to go into is the time. And this is the one that's really, really going to vary, guys. I've had rosin cure up ready for me to whip in 24 hours. And then specifically with this one, I had to wait about, I think, four days or so before I had to whip it. And that's gonna be different with different companies, different strains. But the thing about it and what I really wanna show you guys is what it looks like right before you want to whip it. So no matter you know what company you get or whatever, you'll know what it looks like right before you want to whip it. And so the next thing is the time frame. And usually I wanna say for you guys, I want you to go ahead and check it at about 24 to 30 hours. All right, and so now I'm gonna remove the lid. I am cracking this open just because I think this is like the normal time I normally give it a check. It's uh, typical for most rosins. I do think that this one was looking kind of stable though. So I am thinking this was gonna take a little bit longer, but let's see, let's see how, how it looks. Yeah, guys, this stuff is looking really stable and it's been kind of cold here in Colorado. So this is gonna take some time. I, I think it may need, I'm, I'm, I may give it like another 30 hours or so on this one. It, it's looking like it barely changed at all. So as you guys can see right there, it has barely, barely changed. It's just now starting to melt down in there. It, it definitely needs a lot more time. It would have been best had I not opened it because I kind of already knew it wasn't going to be ready and I would have just let it go for another day or so. But sometimes you really do have to check it because I don't know, this one could have already been ready to whip up a little bit, but unfortunately this one wasn't. So I'm going to go ahead and cap it up and then we will wait a little bit longer. And this is just for you guys just to look in and, and take a peep at it. If it's ready to whip, you're gonna whip it. If it's not ready, you're gonna close it right back up. You do, you do not wanna give it a, a little bit of a whip or leave it open for too long. That's letting it oxidize. And yeah, you just want to see if it's ready to whip. If it is, we're ready to go in. If not, we're closing it up and we're ready to go. And I'm gonna show you guys in basically in my videos how I had to check this a couple times, guys. I, I thought it was going to be ready. It wasn't. I closed it right back up and I was ready to go and, and give it a little bit more time. So it's been about 60 hours or so. We're reaching that 60 hour mark. We're about to hit the farmer's market. Before I get into a little bit more heat, it's about 65 degrees ish outside, maybe 70, but the sun is blaring. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe it's time to whip it. I don't know yet. Let's see. Nope. Like I was saying, guys, it looked like some really strong fresh press. So I'm thinking it's really going to hold itself together. So as we look at it here in this stage, we can see it's starting to cure up. You can see some white stripes in there. This lets me know it's getting close. Once it begins to kind of look dried out and kind of just looks like this right here. So this gram didn't end up drying out crazy how they normally do. And it actually almost has like a little turp layer on the wall outside there. But one thing I did want to mention again is how the last video started to have some white streaks in it. Now it's almost all white and you form. That's when I know it's ready to whip. I will show you guys some pictures of some macro shots of some other rosins I've cured and what they normally look like when they dry out. 
this is going to be when we want to whip it. And so my whipping procedure, and I, I can't, it's really hard to record this. I'm not going to be able to show you guys exact whipping procedures, but I can let you know what I'm doing. And so what I do is I basically bring the bottom of the jar to the top and then I give it a mix. So basically I move the bottom to the top and then I just stir it around, all around. So it gets a nice, even mix. That's, that's what a whipping is. And yeah, after I'm done with that, I give it some really, really light agitation on the top, kind of pushing it down. And that's where I get those super wet grams. And that's when it looks like this. This is what I get in the end product right here. So after the gram got cloudy, I gave it the whip that I just mentioned. And yeah, after the little agitation on top, it gets super wet and looks crazy like this. And guys, almost every time I get this result. Something else I did also want to mention is there is tons of ways to cure. And while I don't recommend this, another way to cure, and let's say you're in a pinch and you want to have cold cure today, is just whipping your rosin. I mean whipping it for like 20, 30 minutes, going at your fresh press, keep on whipping it and whipping it and whipping it, going crazy with it. And yeah, it'll eventually turn into a cold cure right away. Now, I don't recommend this because you're you're letting a lot of oxidation and you're throwing in a lot of heat with the whipping. It, it's it's not the way that I believe that you should cure your rosin, but let, let, like I said, if you're in a crazy pinch, I, I guess I would recommend it in those type of cases. So I have these macro shots here in case you guys were still just a little bit confused. I wanna show you this, cause these are really, really detailed shots. So the shot all the way on the left is what you would get exactly from the dispo. And the shot in the middle is what you would get after you waited about 30 hours or so, 30 to 40 hours. And this is whenever you'd want to whip it. That is the middle picture. And on the picture all the way on the right, that is going to be the outcome. That's going to be your cold cure there. And so as you see, you guys, I didn't mention, you know, whipping multiple times. I mentioned whipping once and I didn't leave the jar open at all. I didn't mention leaving the jar open. I keep the jar sealed all the time in one whip. And that's how you get this result. So now you guys know how I cure. Now it's time to take you guys to the 710 Labs fresh off the press lunch. This was probably the most expensive event I have been to and was by far the best. Amazing, amazing food and amazing fresh dabs. I'm talking fresh off the press. It's, it's, that's why it was in the name. Let's get this started. I can't wait to show you guys. Welcome to Dope and Dusty. And today we're doing a 710 Labs lunch. And yeah, you guys are going to see it starting now. All right. So we were waiting out line. This was the groovy gravy fresh off the press 710 Labs lunch collab i guess you would want to call it and also lion's glass was having a crazy glass gallery show as well at this event so it was super super cool tim the du boy or the do boy from soy cubano sat next to us so it was super cool he also we also all brought our heady cups so that was a, a really cool thing we, i think we were the only ones that did and as you guys can see right there the guy with the hat on all the way to the left that is going to be lion's glass so it was cool he actually showed up to the event a super cool guy introduced himself to us shook our hands and everything really really cool guy these were all his pieces there i didn't know we could smoke out of these but we could i didn't i wish i would have known we could have smoked out of them so as i mentioned there was also like a glass show with it so yeah all his glass was here and after the event they sold his glass so it was selling for crazy amounts yeah as you guys know lion's glass is super popular you rig all the way on the left the one that looks like it has a dinosaur on there that is the lions and elbow collab that was super cool as i mentioned we brought our heady cups to drink some of the lions i believe it said his reserve orange juice so it was specifically from like lion's glass i guess his recipe that orange juice was really good so I, i'm not complaining on that and especially drinking out of our heady cups that was amazing and here we go starting it off with the first dab basically how this lunch went was like a dab and then you got some food with it as well so i was taking my first dab and then i had got some tacos and a crepe or a crepe whatever you want to call it the dabs were supposed to match with the food pairing or kind of complement it so that's why it was a bunch of different foods with a bunch of different dabs they were supposed to complement each other and this was level heady she makes a bunch of tiny stuff like guys in a little bit you can see here, she makes like little earrings that are grams of dabs basically. And there's a little Peak Pro over there. There's a blazer right there. There's a dab right. As you guys can see, she just makes everything super small. And even for like little companies, she'll make the boxing really small for Laser Cat and make like a little fake tiny, tiny gram. Super cool. And yeah, guys, here are some of the dabs that we were they were giving us right off the press, straight onto the dab stick for us, fresh off the press. Like I've never had dabs that fresh before and being able to pair it with like these amazing people that they got, these amazing vendors they got for food was, I just love, love, love this event. 
And yeah, some other dude brought over like another elbow collab and it was like, wow, everybody was freaking out at our table. The guy that came to our table, Ryan, that was him right there. He, he brought that elbow collab and sat at our table. We were like, wow, that isn't some expensive glass. And it was super cool that, that he actually just sat with us. Like that was cool to have one of the coolest rigs there at our table. And here, I'm showing you off some more dabs, guys. These are some fresh presses. You guys can see the bubbles trapped in them. Oh my God, this is my favorite part. So I'm gonna show you guys right here this banana pudding. I'm not a fan of banana pudding. And it had some mango, tango, little spread on the top. This stuff was the best thing there. This was from Emily's Baked. Wow, 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 my favorite thing there. So, so good, and it went really, really well with a papaya dabs. Most of the time while I was there, I was like, I would take the dab and I would eat, and it would just kind of wash away. I couldn't really, you know, get the combination of them both. With this pairing, I could. Like, I could get the funkiness from the papaya, and then you could chase the cheesecake. This right here was the Colorado Caprice, or whatever you want to call it, from Little Arthur's Hoagies. Guys, this was probably my second favorite thing here, and absolutely amazing. This was just cheese and tomatoes, but like amazing quality ingredients, and it tasted so, so good. And yeah, I just started recording these dabs because they look so, so good. I don't remember which one was which here, guys. I, I'm not going to lie, but I wanted to show you like how fresh they look and the clarity in them. I believe this was actually the last one I took because I'm going to show you guys the ice cream next. So if we look at the card, I'll be able to tell you which one it actually was. And so it looks like it was the Gacolina because that was paired with the right cream and the Bodega ice cream pairing. And wow, that, guys, this was super good too. Like there were so many good things here. Like I, I was just, some of it went out, out of the range of my taste buds because I don't eat crazy stuff like that. So I feel like somebody who loves to eat crazy stuff would just absolutely have died here. Like their favorite thing, dabs and crazy food. And guys, here was one of the last things I wanted to show you, or I, the, two of the last things. There was the coffee. There was this guy that made coffee there. I'm not a fan of coffee. This was one of the last things I tried. Was not a big fan of it. That was the one thing I wasn't a big fan of. But I already knew I wasn't a fan of coffee. So it was kind of like, I, I was just going to try it because the stuff there was like crazy and like heady. I don't know what you want to call it. And so I just wanted to try it. Maybe it would have, maybe it would surprise me. It didn't though. But the dab that paired with it was good. So I was like, yeah. I'll go ahead and take a sip. One thing I didn't get to show you guys was this pizza from Larry Bruno's. It was like the peach pizza. It was okay, not my favorite. I forgot to get a video of it though, but my girlfriend got a little snippet of it. At the very end of the event, they kind of turned it into the glass show. And so they put everybody's names into a hat if you wanted to try and get something and they just started pulling out names. And if your name was picked, it was your time to get something. And it was that, that was really cool. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. And until the next most session on Dope and Dusty, see you guys later.